Good morning, students. In this lesson, I want to teach you how to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. First, we want to review how to derive the quadratic formula by completing the square. We saw this in a previous lesson, so um, we want to review this because you are required to do this on the end of course exam. So step one, as always, make sure the equation is equal to zero. And we're going to use complete the square. So the x squared term has to be 1. So we're going to divide everything by a so that x squared would be 1, would have a coefficient of 1. Next, I'm going to move the constant to the opposite side of the equal sign. Again, this is just the process for completing the square over again. Remember, these are actually numbers. Next, I'll simplify that. C over A minus C over A is 0. So I'm going to leave a space there for, for the complete the square process. And 0 minus C over A is just minus C over A. Next, I'm going to take the B term, B over A, divide it by 2, and square it and add it to both sides. So Instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to multiply by 1 half, which is the same thing, square it, and add it to both sides. Next, I'm going to factor the left-hand side and simplify the exponential expression. b over 2a squared is just b squared over 4a squared. I also rearranged it so that I have the b squared minus 4a squared in the front with a subtraction problem instead of negative c over a. Next, I need to find a common denominator so I can add those two fractions together. So my common denominator is 4a to the second power. So that meant that I needed to multiply this denominator by 4a and the numerator by 4a to get this. Simplifying that fraction, I have x plus 2b over 2a quantity squared equals b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Okay, I'm going to copy this onto the next page for you guys. So the next step in the complete the square process is to take the square root of both sides. And after I take the square root, I'm going to simplify that radical. So I've got x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus, don't forget there's a positive or a negative root, square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a to the second power. Now next I'm going to take the square root of 4a to the second power because that denominator is a perfect square. So the square root of 4a squared is 2a. So now I only have a radical in the numerator. Next, I'll subtract my minus b over 2a from both sides to isolate the x term. Once I do that, I'll simplify that fraction on the right. And I end up with x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this, folks, is the quadratic formula. You need to commit that to memory because you will be asked to use it. Sample questions that I have seen is they give you the equation, and then they ask you to fill in parts of the quadratic formula. So you need to know exactly what that formula says and how to insert um, the numbers in there. Okay, so let's move on to the lesson about using the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. So step one, make sure the equation is set equal to zero. This is a bit different from the completing the square in that we want to go back to where we want the equation equal to zero before we use the quadratic formula. Next, we want to identify A, B, and C. 
from the equation. So here A is 1, B is 6, and C is 2. Next, we want to write the formula. Anytime you use a formula, you need to write the formula down and then substitute the values into the formula. So here I've substituted the 6 for the B, the 4 for the, for the 4, 1 for A, 2 for C, 1 for A. Next, I'm going to simplify. 2 times 1 is 2, 6 squared is 36, and 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. I'll simplify again. 36 minus 8 is 28. Next, I'll take the square root of 28, which is 5.29. Okay, from there, I want to break it into two problems. I've got negative 6 plus 5.29 divided by 2, or negative 6 minus 5.9 divided by 2 to take into account both roots. And then I'll simplify those to get my final answer. So my final answer here is negative 0 0.355 or x equals negative 5.645. And of course I could round those off to whatever place value they asked me to round that. Okay guys, let's move on to our next example. Again, the first step is we want to set this equal to 0. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides so that my equation is equal to 0 on the right-hand side. Next, I'm going to identify A, B, and C. Here A is 2, B is 8, C is 6. Write my formula. Next, I'll substitute the values in for the formula. And from here on out, I will simplify that formula. So here, 8 squared is 64. 4 times 2 times 6 is 48. Subtract 64 minus 48, I get 16. Next, I'll take the square root of 16 and get plus or minus 4. I'll separate this into two problems. And then, of course, the last step is to simplify those two problems. And I will end up with my two solutions being negative 1 or negative 3. Okay, guys, here's our last example. Again, when we want to use the quadratic formula or factoring, we want to set our equation equal to 0. So to set this one equal to 0, I need to add 2x plus 9 to both sides. Then I'll identify a, b, and c again. Here a is 1, b is 2, and c is 9. Write my formula. Again, each time you use a formula, you need to write a formula, and then substitute. So here I've substituted my 2 for B, my 1 for A, and my 9 for C. Now I'm going to do the simplification. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 times 9 is 36. Next I'll subtract 4 minus 36 and get negative 32. So the next step would be to go ahead and simplify that square root. But when I try to take the square root of a negative number, I get a no solution on my calculator. That's because the square root of a negative number does not have a real number solution. It's what we call a complex solution. So for this one, we would say there is no solution. For the last part of this lesson, I want to teach you how to determine how many solutions a quadratic equation has. So we use the expression underneath the radical, b squared minus 4ac, which, is named, which has a name of the discriminant. We just call this the discriminant. So we already know that if we try to take the square root of a negative number, that's not possible, or it's a complex root. So if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, 
That means it's a negative number. It's no solution. If b squared minus 4ac is exactly equal to 0, then it's one solution. Or if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, that means it's a positive number. It's two solutions. So we're really just checking to see, is b squared minus 4ac a positive number, a negative number, or exactly 0? So let's look at these three examples. So the first thing I want to do is identify a, b, and c, just like I do when I'm using the quadratic formula. Write down my discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. Substitute the values for b, a, and c. Simplify. Now, since this is a positive number, this, that equation would have two solutions. Okay. Example number two. Identify A, B, and C. Write down your discriminant. Substitute your values. So 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 1 times 1 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So we see when we have 0 as an answer to the discriminant, that means that we have one solution. And for our last example, identify A, B, and C, write out the discriminant, substitute, and simplify. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 times 10 is 40. So 4 minus 40 would be negative 36. Since this is a negative number, that means that we would have no solution. Okay, guys, this concludes today's lesson. Um, please remember to click on subscribe to see the rest of my videos, and you guys have a great day.